Hello, my name is Nicole Stenzel. I am a second year pharmacy resident specializing in critical care at Stanford Medical Center in Fargo, North Dakota. And today we'll be discussing balanced fluids versus unbalanced fluids in the ICU. An overview of the presentation, we'll start by discussing fluid composition uh, and the effect that fluid composition has on physiology, uh, specifically in regards to fluid resuscitation. Uh, we'll look at some primary literature, first discussing the SPLIT trial, <clears throat> followed by the SALT-ED trial, and concluding with the SMART trial. We'll then discuss some key takeaways that we can uh, take away from this primary literature and uh, how we might change our clinical practice based on the evidence available. So before talking about specific fluids, I think it's important to review some common definitions or terms that are used to describe uh, fluids. Uh, first, we can talk about osmolarity, which is discussing the concentration of solute per volume, so the unit there being osmols per one liter of solution. Uh, next would be osmolality, <clears throat> which is a concentration of solute per mass, uh, this unit being osmols per one kilogram of solvent. When we talk about fluid resuscitation, uh, these definitions are very similar because one liter of water has a mass of one kilogram. Uh, when we talk about tonicity, this is uh, much different than osmolarity or osmolality uh, because the tonicity uh, is the effect of the solute concentration difference between two compartments. When we talk about fluid resuscitation, those two compartments being intra and extracellular compartments. Tonicity is only influenced by solutes that cannot cross the membrane. So, for example, uh, dextrose 5% water or D5W is an isoosmolar solution, but when infused, the sugar is actually able to pass into the cells and the remaining water in the extracellular uh, space is a hypotonic solution. When looking at normal saline specifically as a resuscitation fluid, uh, this is an unbuffered solution or an unbalanced solution that contains 154 milliequivalents per liter of both sodium and chloride. The chloride con content in normal saline is supraphysiologic compared to the normal plasma chloride concentration of 95 to 110 milliequivalents per liter. And there are theories suggesting that resuscitating patients with a fluid that has a supraphysiological chloride content can result in some adverse physiologic changes, including a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, um, as well as decreased renal perfusion. Uh, we know that hyperchloremia, hyperchloremia alone is implicated in renal injury. Chloride can reduce renal blood flow, cause renal vasoconstriction, and reduce the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. Uh, there are, may be other mechanisms contributing to our patients in the ICU uh, developing acute kidney injury, <clears throat> but the primary literature we'll be reviewing here in a minute um, does suggest that the use of chloride-rich fluids uh, may lead to worse renal. There are some advantages that normal saline may offer, um, especially for patients at risk for cerebral edema and those with chloride responsive metabolic acidosis. In traumatic brain injury or TBI, the osmolarity and tonicity of the plasma and the fluids we administer are very important. Normal saline has a theoretical osmolarity of 308 milliosmoles per liter versus the osmolarity of LR that is 273 milliosmoles per liter. Um, so in this case, uh, the hypoosmol hypoosmolarity of LR in a case of TBI um, could potentially increase the risk of cerebral edema in these patients. When we talk about DKA, uh, along the same lines, uh, a plasma hyperosmolarity and a rapid decrease in this osmolarity could place the patient at risk for cerebral edema, and so offering a hyperosmolar solution such as normal saline, uh, may be beneficial in these patients. When we talk about balanced fluids, there are two balanced fluids that are used the most widely in practice and have the most evidence um, looking at their use. Uh, the first is lactated ringers, and the second being plasmolite. They're referred to as balanced or buffered fluids because they are buffered with precursors to bicarbonate, those precursors being serum lactate and, I'm sorry, sodium lactate and acetate. 
They more closely mimic our plasma electrolyte composition, and I have included a graphic here um, indicating a range of uh, normal electrolyte composition in human, human plasma um, compared to what is available in normal saline, lactated ringers, and then plasma light. There are two special considerations to take into account when using LR or plasma light in ICU patients. Um, the first being that the lactate in uh, LR um, is actually sodium lactate, <clears throat> and this is metabolized by the liver. So you may see an increase in serum lactate in patients that have liver dysfunction uh, because they're not able to appropriately metabolize the sodium lactate that they are receiving from the lactated ringers. When we talk about potassium, there uh, is some concern in giving patients LR that already might have a um, high potassium level. Um, and actually, when you look at the contents of potassium in LR and plasmolite, um, they're relatively low. So in LR, uh, in one liter of LR, there are four milliequivalents of potassium. Um, and in plasmolite, there are five milliequivalents of potassium per liter. Um, there is evidence that using LR and plasmolite is likely safe in hyperkalemia. Um, and it also has been studied and shown to be safe in DKA, rhabdomyolysis, and post-renal transplant. And again, this is due to the relatively low concentration of potassium in these fluids. So now we'll discuss some primary literature looking at the use of balanced solutions compared to normal saline uh, in the intensive care unit. So the first study we'll look at is the SPLIT study, which was published in 2015 in uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association, or JAMA. Uh, they looked at the effect of a buffered crystalloid solution versus saline specifically on acute kidney injury among patients in the ICU. It was a prospective, multi-center, blinded, cluster-randomized, double crossover study that compared compounded sodium chloride to PL-148, or plasmolite, in critically ill adults. They enrolled between April 2014 and October 2014 in four tertiary ICUs in New Zealand. Their primary outcome was the proportion of patients with an AKI. Their secondary outcomes, uh, change in creatinine, use of renal replacement therapy, duration of mechanical ventilation, ICU readmission, ICU length of stay, ICU and in-hospital all-cause mortality. They were able to enroll 2,278 patients, 1,162 receiving a balanced crystalloid, 1,116 receiving saline. They found no difference in the primary outcome and no difference in any secondary outcomes. Um, however, a couple of things I'd like to bring up when discussing this study is that the primary outcome was defined um, by change in serum creatinine, um, and that was the only uh, definition for acute kidney injury. Um, typically, in studies, we like to use uh, maybe urine output as a marker, um, following the KDGO criteria for acute kidney injury, um, and not just those changes in serum creatinine. Um, this also does have low external validity, as it only took place in four ICUs, um, specifically in New Zealand. Um, and I think it's important to point out that 85% of these patients were post-cardiac patients um, who were taken to the ICU after surgery. Um, only 8% were septic, so that might give you um, kind of an idea of what portion of these patients um, really were true ICU patients. So the conclusion from this study, um, the author's conclusion is that the use of a buffered crystalloid compared with saline did not reduce the risk of AKI in critically ill patients in the ICU. We'll move on to the SALT-ED trial then. Uh, this was published in 2018 in the New England Journal of Medicine. And this was looking at balanced crystalloids versus saline in non-critically ill adults, specifically adults presenting to the ED. So this is a single center, pragmatic, unblended, multiple crossover trial comparing a balanced crystalloid um, LR compared to normal saline in non-critically ill adults in the ED. 
So this took place uh, between January 1st, 2016 and April 30th, 2017 at Vanderbilt University. Um, and actually the protocol of the study is that every month they would switch their fluids. So um, for example, um, all patients that came to the ED uh, in the month of January 2016 would receive LR as their resuscitation fluid. Um, in February, they would switch to normal saline and March back to LR, so on and so on. The primary outcome of this study was hospital-free days to day 28. Secondary outcomes being major adverse kidney events within 30 days, AKI stage two or higher as defined by um, the KDEGO criteria and in hospital death. So they were able to enroll 13,000 patients, um, 6,708 to the balance group, 6,639 to the normal saline group. They found that hyperchloremia and acidemia were less common in the balance group, and there were lower incidents of major adverse kidney events within 30 days in the balance group. They, however, did not see a difference in the number of hospital free days. So the author's discussion from this study uh, is that balanced crystallites did not result in a shorter time to hospital discharge. However, when looking at a composite in, uh, outcome of death, new renal replacement, or persistent renal dysfunction, they did see a significantly lower incidence of that composite outcome in the balanced group. Um, when looking at the absolute uh, risk rate reduction, um, a number needed to treat of 111 is calculated. They did note that there was a, a higher adherence to the assigned crystalloid group compared to the balanced uh, crystalloid group. And 95% of the balanced crystalloids that were used at this institution was LR. It should also be noted that 35% of these patients did not have an available baseline serum creatinine. Uh, and so an estimated baseline serum creatinine was computed based on a protocol-specific calculation and then was utilized uh, to determine uh, the primary and secondary outcomes related to renal function. So the authors in the study concluded that among non-critically ill adults treated with IV fluids in the ED, the number of hospital-free days does not differ between patients who receive balanced crystalloids and those who receive saline. At the same time the SALT-ED trial was being conducted, the SMART trial was being conducted at Vanderbilt University, and this was looking at balanced crystalloids compared to saline in critically ill adults specifically. So again, this was a pragmatic, unblended, cluster randomized, uh, multiple crossover trial comparing balanced crystalloids to saline in critically ill adults. So between June 1st, 2015 and April 30th, 2017 in five ICUs at Vanderbilt University. Um, these ICUs were primarily medical surgical ICUs. Their primary outcome was major adverse kidney event within 30 days, secondary outcomes in hospital death before ICU discharge, 40 days or 60 days. They also looked at ICU free days, ventilator free days, days alive and free of renal replacement therapy, and then other secondary so they were able to enroll 15,802 patients, 7,942 to the balanced crystalloids group, 7,860 to receive normal saline. They saw less major adverse kidney events occurring in the balanced group when looking at the absolute uh, rate reduction, a, norm, a number needed to treat of 91 is calculated. We look at 30 day in hospital mortality, it was significantly lower in those patients with sepsis and receiving balanced crystalloids. That number needed to treat being 24. There was a trend toward lower overall mortality in the balanced group, although this was not statistically significant, and a trend toward uh, less new renal replacement therapy in the balanced group. Again, this uh, not statistically significant. A few things to bring up, um, there was no protocol for initiation of renal replacement therapy. This was uh, based on the opinion um, and subjective uh, decision making of the provider. And uh, the utility of these 30 day outcomes as always is uncertain. There's a lot of discussion about uh, the benefit of looking at 30 day mortality in these ICU patients um, compared to maybe 60 or 90 day mortality. So something to keep in mind is that this is a 30 day outcome. The authors concluded that IV administration of balanced crystalloids rather than saline does have a favor favorable effect on 
um, the composite outcome of death, new renal replacement therapy, or persistent renal dysfunction. I mentioned that uh, patients in the SMART trial who were deemed to be septic um, benefited more profoundly uh, from the use of a balanced fluid compared to normal saline. Um, and so this prompted a secondary analysis of the SMART trial data, which was published in 2018, uh, looking specifically at patients admitted to the medical ICU with an ICD-10 code for septic. This ended up being a little over 1,600 patients, and the primary outcome of the secondary analysis was 30-day in-hospital mortality. So the 30-day in-hospital mortality rate of the balanced group was 26.3% compared to 31.2% in the normal saline group. Uh, this amounts to a difference of 4.9% and an absolute risk reduction of 4.9%, um, which gives us a number needed to treat of 20. Um, so this is uh, a very profound finding from the secondary analysis of um, the SMART trial, indicating that there, there may be a lot of benefit in, in treating our patients with sepsis with a balanced fluid. There were also a few secondary outcomes that were shown to be statistically significantly different um, as well in these patients. So patients who received a balanced fluid who were septic had less major adverse kidney events a greater number of vasopressor-free days, and a greater number of renal replacement-free days. Um, so very compelling evidence in the secondary analysis looking specifically at medical ICU patients with sepsis. So a few key takeaways then from all of this literature that we discussed today. Um, I think it is true that current evidence may not uh, overwhelmingly support immediate change. However, when we look at the physiological adva advantages of using a balanced fluid, I think that that may tip the scale um, to a change in practice in utilizing a balanced fluid for uh, critically ill patients. Um, I would like to challenge you to identify a personal risk to benefit threshold um, for uh, you know, your propensity to use a balanced fluid like lactated ringers in um, your critically ill patients. Um, and potentially this could uh, shift towards a practice change of using lactated ringers over normal saline. As always, more evidence is welcomed. Um, and hopefully we may see some more evidence about the purported benefits of using a balanced fluid in critically ill. I have provided my references on this slide uh, for anyone who would like uh, those. They're there for you. Um, and I am available for any questions. So again, my name is Nicole Stenzel. I'm a second year critical care pharmacy resident at Sanford Medical Center in Fargo, North Dakota. I've provided my email address um, as well as uh, I will be able to answer any questions that you may leave below in the comments through the ICU REACH page. Um, so please comment below any questions that you may have. Um, and I thank you all very much for uh, listening to this discussion today. Thank you.